Learning to identify fungi takes time. It's a slow process of careful observation, of building comprehensive knowledge of fungi in the context of their environments. G'day, my name's Alison Puglio. I'm an ecologist with a particular interest in fungi. Let's say we're in the bush or in the park or on the farm. We see a mushroom and we want to identify it. Where do we begin? In this video, we look at the basic steps in identifying fungi. We look at some important mushroom diagnostic features. And if you're foraging for edible mushrooms, we look at one toxic lookalike species that you might like to learn first. Identifying fungi means being an astute observer of not just the fungi, but the habitats and substrates, environments and conditions in which they grow. In previous videos, we've looked at the relationships that many fungi form with plants, known as mycorrhizal symbioses. Understanding these relationships helps us to identify fungi, as particular fungi grow with particular plants. For example, the well-known introduced fungus, Amanita muscaria, or the fly agaric, grows in association with exotic conifers, primarily Pinus radiata, as well as exotic broadleaf trees, such as Betula, that's birch, and Quercus, or oak. While the fly agaric is probably the world's most familiar mushroom, in native Australian bush we'll find over a hundred species of native Australian amanitas. Another important feature when identifying a fungus is the substrate in which it grows. For example, it might be growing in soil, or a herbivore scat. Let's take a closer look at a mushroom and the various parts we need to examine in order to identify it. Here we have Lepista nuda, also known as the bluet or wood bluet. Three important parts are the pileus or cap, the hymenium or fertile surface, and the stipe, or stem. The bluet pileus starts out convex, becoming plain with age. They're usually lilac to purple, becoming brown as they mature. If we turn it over, you'll see the fertile surface consists of purple lamellae that are quite close together or crowded. Notice too that the margins of the pileus are inrolled, that is, they curl slightly inwards. Then have a look at the stipe, and you'll note that it is also purple and often thickens toward the base, that sometimes has a slight lilac downy covering. Also remember to use your senses of touch and smell. If you feel the texture of the pilea surface, you'll note it's smooth, almost like rubber. Bluets have a particular odour variously described as perfumed, fragrant, fruity or floral. If you're a forager, it's important to learn not just the edible species, but their toxic lookalike species as well. Some foragers of field mushrooms in Australia have made the fatal mistake of confusing them with the exotic and deadly poisonous Amanita phylloides, or death cap. This is one species with which every forager should be familiar because it's one that you never want to eat. In Australia, the death cap grows in association with the genus Quercus or oak, particularly Quercus roba or the English oak. The pileus of the death cap starts out ovoid or hemispherical, then becomes convex, expanding to plane. The colour can be highly variable, from white to pale yellow, to pale brown to various shades of green. The surface is smooth, often shiny, or with a metallic luster. The lamellae are white, close or crowded, 
and free from the stipe. That is, if you look closely, you'll note that they don't actually touch the stipe. The stipe is generally equal in diameter along its length, with a prominent bulbous base contained within a sac-like membranous vulva. The stipe is typically white or tinged yellowish green, sometimes with zigzag banding. Also note the white membranous partial veil that forms a skirt-like annulus on the upper stipe. Remember when learning to identify fungi to observe the same species at different developmental stages and with exposure to differing weather conditions. That way you become familiar with the extent of variation in colour, shape and form within the species. While death caps can be fatal to human beings, don't forget how important they are to the growth and resilience of oak trees. In the last video in the series, we look at a couple of interesting Australian species. See you then.